Welcome to another installment of Fighting for the Faith. My name is Chris Rosebro. I am your servant in Jesus Christ. This is the channel that compares what people are saying in the name of God to the Word of God. Now, this one's going to be a, a shorter episode, but uh, maybe a little fun, maybe a little aggravating. I don't know how it'll play out, but uh, when, in the very first year of the Fighting for the Faith podcast, there was a video that made the rounds by a fellow by the name of Rick Pino. And Rick Pino, he, in this video, told people to take their socks off and then, you know, hold them over their head and, and you know, swing them around like this while he sang, you spin me right round, Jesus, right round. And what's really funny is, is that this video has been recently discovered by other YouTubers, but we commented on it 11, 12 <laughs> 13, I don't know how many years ago now, but a long time ago. Now, it, it, probably 13 years ago. It's it's kind of, you know, it's past that point now. So um, what we're going to do, I noticed that the fellow showed up at One City Church. And uh, and actually, he's the guy who preached the message. And and I'm going to note this, and that is, is that there are certain people who are so obviously false just there's there's nothing about them that shows that they bear the fruit of the spirit love joy peace patience kindness gentleness self-control that they rightly handle a biblical text they are um on their face you can tell merely by their appearances that something's way off it is people like this who i think the devil has sent in in order to mock us because scripture says to test and we don't and so he sends more and more clowns into the church. And these clowns are never called out. They are given positions of prominence. They're invited in to preach, and they can't rightly handle a biblical text to save their lives. Rick Pino is that kind of a person. So let, let's do this. Let's, uh, let's whirl up the desktop and uh, pull up the uh, web browser. And here is um, Rick Pino. And we'll do a little uh, historical work. We'll show you that original video. It's a little grainy, but uh, um, <laughs> immediately it's like, I know that this guy's a clown. And I would never, as a pastor, invite him to preach at my church, ever. Because I know that he makes a mockery of Christianity, the Holy Spirit, and God. So you know, he's wearing a hat that says, slay like David, which means he's a narcissist. The, the account of David and Goliath is not about you learning how to slay your Goliaths or anything like that. That's nonsense. So already, I can tell just by looking at him, because he's given me the words to tell me how he twists God's word, he, he should never be given the pulpit anywhere. Let's see what he does. You know, one thing I love about the Bible is that the Apostle Paul told us that when we speak the word of God, it imparts grace to the hearers. So when we study, when we listen to the word of God, there is going to be an impartation of grace. Anybody want an impartation today? It's going to be an impartation of grace. Oh my goodness. And if you believe this, <laughs> you know, I've got a hole in Arizona. It's kind of grand. I, I could sell it to you for cheap. Uh, let's see here. Let, let's go back in time. It, it, the, the, this was my first exposure to Rick Pino. And again, first year of the Fighting for the Faith podcast, we covered this, and it was utterly blasphemous, but it's still blasphemous today. This will tell you something about what this guy's really about. Watch this. You, Lord, we know that we can't receive anything from anyone until we have honor in our hearts for them. So just like Moses, as a sign of honor, as a sign that you are removing the things that separate you from the holy place, I just invite you to kick off your shoes right now. What? Come on, everybody. I still, I mean, it's, <laughs> I've seen this a couple of times. It's still shocking. All over this place. I don't care how young you are. I don't care how old you are. Kick your shoes off in this place. And while you're down there, grab a couple socks. This is the devil making a mockery of Christ and the church going along with it. Come on. Everybody going to grab something to spin. You guys ready? 
Adam, you guys ready? Go ahead, guys. Come on, put those things up. Spin your shoes, sock keys, I don't care. Everybody, you're not... If the Holy Spirit were flying through the room in the form of a dove, somebody just hit it. Spin it, Eddie! With a sock. Come on, grab something! This is the devil making a mockery of Christ in the church, and the Christians are going along with it. <laughs> Yeah! Let's sing this. You spin me right round, Jesus, right round, like a record. Yeah. Right round, round, round. Yeah, I, I, do I need to go on? You can you, just type in Rick Pino, spin me right around, and you can find it on YouTube. And now here, here he is, you know, 13 years later, delivering a sermon at a church. And we can already tell in the first 19 seconds, he's incapable of rightly handling a biblical text. Scripture's clear that those who are to be preachers and teachers in Christ's church must have studied and showed themselves approved as a workman who need not blush with embarrassment, who can rightly handle, rightly divide the word of truth. And we already know 19 seconds in, he's twisting God's word. Are you, I, I'm going to speak the word and there's going to be an impartation of grace. Uh huh. Not from me, not from a man, but from the Bible. There's going to be an impartation released today. I believe it. Let's go to the book of Ephesians together. We're going to go and we're going to visit uh, a pretty well-known verse. But I want to encourage... Yeah, one that constantly gets, um, well, twisted. And uh, let, me, let me do this. I'll kind of prepare this now. Ephesians chapter 3. And I want to point this out. And so here in, in Ephesians chapter 3, I'll start in verse 7 so you can watch how the context unfolds. And then when we get to the passage, you'll see what I'm talking about. You know, you'll recognize the passage. It's one that constantly gets mangled in these types of churches. So of this gospel, I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, it, which was given to me by the working of his power. To me, though I, I, I am the very least of the saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things. So so that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God might now be made to, known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was according to the eternal purpose that he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. So I ask you not to lose heart over what I am suffering for you, which is your glory." Okay, so you'll note, he's reminding them of the gospel, reminding them of the fact that he's the least of the saints. He, he, he was a murderer of Christians, right? And see, now comes the important words. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father. Here, in the middle of the epistle to the Ephesians, Paul prays. I bow my knees before the Father. So what is he doing now? This, this portion of Ephesians is a prayer from whom every family in heaven on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant, to you, grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being. And here's another example, wonderful prime example of the Apostle Paul when he prays of not decreeing and declaring, but what? Asking. That's what prayer is. Okay. I pray that through the riches of his glory that he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth, to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge and that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. A prayer that begins in verse 14. Now, what happens in verse 20? Now to him. What Paul does in verse 20, this is a benedictory thought at the tail end of his prayer, which is written into this text. Now, to him who is able 
to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, according to the power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Hmm. Well, when you put that in context, you can see that that's the closing of the prayer that begins in verse 14. But Bible twisters... Oh, they just just jump right into it. They ignored the context and say, oh, look, at God wants to do abundantly more than we could ever ask or think. Oh, look at that. It's all about abundance and prosperity and all. Yeah, no, that's not. It's a benedictory thought, and the benedictory thought is leading to what? To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. So let's see what Rick Pino does with this. He's going to spin us right round, I'm sure. I encourage everybody today, can I just submit something to you? We need to stay always in the place of wonder. What? Well, I'm currently in a place of wonder, wondering where you got that from. I remember whenever my kids were really little, my daughter Zoe, who's 11 now, when she was two and three and four years old, I would just go, Hey, Zoe. And she'd go, oh, yeah. She didn't even know what was going on. I just called her name. And she, oh, yeah. Like she was so excited. How many of you, uh, how many parents in here, parents, grandparents, let's see. Do you know how easy it is to entertain these two and three year olds? You just get some chalk and some bubbles. And they're entertained for hours. Now that they're like preteens, you got to buy all the accessories and all the, you know what I'm talking about? And it's just a natural progression. Sometimes we lose our wonder. But listen, wonder allows us to see things like a child. And I say it like this. Which text says that? Because Ephesians 3 doesn't say it. The Israelites didn't perish for lack of wonders. They perished for lack of wonder. Which text says that? It's not that they didn't have all these incredible miracles happening in their midst every single day. It's that they couldn't see God in the everyday, in the mundane. So I want to... So basically he's trafficking in, in pseudo profundities. This doesn't sound biblical exegesis. He's not rightly handling a biblical text. He's not preaching the word. And we've noted that he's somebody who, by his very actions and so-called ministry, makes a mockery of Christ and of the church. I encourage you today, as we read through some of these scriptures, maybe you've heard them before, but approach them with wonder in your heart. Because wonder is going to allow us to receive the kingdom like a child. Are you all ready for this? Sure. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. I knew it. Out of context. It's a benedictory thought. We all know it. Let's read it together. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ask or think according to the power that works in us. It's his power working in us. But look at the very first word of this scripture, y'all. What is? Watch what he does with this. This is just so bizarre. Say. Somebody say now. Say now. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next month. Now. God is able. God is willing. God is ready right now. Did you know that? Yeah. Just because it says now to him doesn't mean that this is about now. That's just, it's, uh, it's a benedictory thought. This guy's twisting God's word horribly. I wouldn't let him preach to my cat's litter box. His power is not the problem. His willingness is very rarely the problem. Sometimes the thing that we are... What is the problem, Rick? ...calling the timing of God is not the timing of God at all. It's our fear. It's our doubt. It's our unbelief. And I want to encourage you today. Everything that God has for you is on the other side of fear. What? How are you getting that from Ephesians 3.20 out of context? It's incredible to me that, you know, in the past five years or so, there is a song that has swept the church. I'm no longer... A 
You spin me right round, Ricky, right round. Yeah, you just absolute bizarre. I think you get the point. I'm not going to belabor it. Like I said, it was going to be a shorter episode. And this is what passes for preaching today in the church. And here's the thing. People, they don't sit there and go, you know, I wonder if really we should be having this guy. No, what they end up doing is they say, oh, the, oh, Rick, he is so zealous. He's He he really exudes the spirit. And boy, he really made me feel good. Uh, a, a pastor who actually rightly handles God's word, they go, you know, he's kind of boring. And, you know, I, it kind of left me a little dry. I didn't, I, I didn't get to laugh that much. And, uh, and so they get rid of that guy. There, in fact, so many faithful pastors, they're being driven out of the church today and replaced by entertainment clowns like Rick Pino. It's sad. It's sad. It shows you the true state of the church. And the devil's the one who sends yahoos like him into the church to make a mockery of Christ and to make a mockery of us as Christians. And the world sees it so clearly. When are we going to wake up and start thinking biblically? Hopefully you found this helpful. If so, all the information on how you can share the video, it's down below in the description. And until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won by Jesus Christ in his vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins. Amen. Amen.